Cantina Club. We're going to have a regular episode this week uh, where we do um, basically a retrospective of the latest Pensacon uh, that just took place. Uh, when was that exactly? What, two months ago? A couple months ago? It was in May. Yeah, so last month. Um, <laughs> and we'll uh, be right back to get into it after this. Oh, and one other thing. We have a special guest that you haven't seen in a couple of years on the, on the episode this week. All right. Be right back. We all know around here all right all right well welcome back guys um we're gonna go ahead and get into things here um but first before we get into the subject matter of pensacon uh, we have a Veracu segment, which we haven't had in a while. Um, <laughs> I'll actually go first this week, uh, this episode. Um, I picked up a couple of little things. Um, I picked up the latest uh, issue of Star Wars Insider. Nice. A little green guy you may have seen before on the cover there. Possibly. So possibly familiar. And ironically, I also bought this, the uh, Star Wars Mandalorian Guide to Season 1, which has... The younger version of the same <laughs> type of character. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it doesn't look as good when you look at it that way. The yellow, when you compare Yoda, so the other Yoda. Yeah, that's a good idea. Now I wonder that one's CGI. The older uh-huh. Yoda probably, or it's a. Yeah, I'm not sure. A, oh, you, mean real, right? you mean this yeah, one? You mean this one? It's art of it's art of some kind. Right. I bet you know. Whereas the other one looks like the, uh, just a close up of the yeah, it does, puppet. Yeah, yeah. But as I'm looking at it, it's definitely CGI. It's not a puppet. Yeah, for sure. Yes, that's why I was. If it's a puppet why. photo, it's been airbrushed dramatically. So, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely uh, <laughs> and it's, it's definitely it's art posed and everything. <laughs> and yeah. that's of course the puppet. So, <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> I was right. speculating the other day that somebody was talking about they should do a alien star wars crossover <laughs> and i, and I mm-hmm. said they already did with the you know the spider eggs <laughs> episode yeah yeah they and, did well they actually <laughs> did, they actually did that in the comics i think they actually have an episode yeah. like some sort of not a non-canon thing of course i think you know, vader fights some vader fights like an alien or something like that one of the xenomorphs yeah but, uh, it made me think that um because baby yoda can sometimes be creepy and he's weird that he could be a chestburster from Yoda's species that, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> that has survived. Exactly. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine chewing through Yoda's chest and coming out? Like, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> All right. So what uh, what you got for us, Greedo? Well, I guess uh, I'm going to show this. This is goes with our Pensacon um, our Pensacon segment mm-hmm. because, uh, but. I had some autographs added to this Stormtrooper helmet at Pensacon. But it's that is been so nice. It's been autographed the, over the last couple of years and before mm-hmm. the pandemic. So, so give uh, us an idea who all you got on there. I see Dennis Lawson there. Yeah, course. there's Dennis Wedge. Lawson, Dickie Beer, um, who nice. was Boba Fett. Luke, Boba Fett and among Luke's, many others. <laughs> Luke stand in and a ton, a ton of other right. know, characters and Jedi. Mm-hmm. Um, that's who is that? Uh, Chris Bond is on here, who was the original. They call him the original Stormtrooper. He's the British, uh, you know, from I think he was in all three movies as a Stormtrooper. Mm-hmm. Oh, he okay. was one of the one of the guys that they fitted the molds to first and everything for, oh, the, okay. for the Stormtrooper. Oh, interesting. Um, the original clone, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not even, I don't even remember. Who this is, <laughs> but they read, I can't read it right now. Oh, Stormtrooper. So, but I don't remember who that is. Um, the one of the cool things is I have um Michael Carter mm-hmm. and Matthew Wood on here. Oh, nice. Um, two uh, the Fortunas, yeah, kind of 
above each other. Oh, there, I see, so. yeah, Michael Carter. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. And uh, Jabba's mm-hmm. palace is kind of on this side, you know, with uh, Femi Taylor. And um, let's see, Bob Spiker, uh, Tuscan Raider, Elephant Trainer, who was in oh, okay. Pizza Con. Um, who's, that, who's that in gold on the back? Steven Constantino, the Gamorrean Guard. So there's oh, a lot nice. of Jabba stuff on the back. Uh, gold is Gold Leader. So, oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Angus McGinnis. And, yeah, Angus uh, McGinnis. Yep. Uh, you got John Morton and um, Jonas, uh, oh, okay. the new Chewbacca. Uh, nice. My thought, my thought for this piece was to be a catch-all for any Star Wars, any Star Wars related. It doesn't have to be Imperials the, yeah, or well, Stormtroopers or anything. Yeah, right. That uh, that have Stormtroopers in the project. So right, right. Um, of course, yeah. Which is a ton now. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, would you expand that to prequels or no? Because those are technically no. There's no. There's yeah. no uh, Stormtroopers in there, but <laughs> no sequel uh, trilogy has to be original, like OG Stormtroopers. But spoiler, which you know, if you're mm-hmm. really, really fanatical about spoilers, it's not really a spoiler. But <laughs> you and McGregor said that um, uh, filming Obi Wan, he saw a sand trooper. He walked up next to oh. a sand trooper the other day. Oh wow! And, and freaked out. So. Uh, I could add you and McGregor to this if I wanted to, because evidently exactly, his, his Obi Wan, yeah, yeah, now is going to appear with the you know Imperial with those, yeah, those yeah, troopers. those guys, very cool. So um, yeah, that's interesting. And mm-hmm. uh, but I, I almost got uh, Emily Swallow in there who played the armor on the Mandalorian because she killed all those stormtroopers. And oh yeah, that's awesome. But uh, but I kind of waited because she's doing a lot of conventions. I think I'll. Mm-hmm. possibly so you got plenty later, of time to get her hopefully yeah but i thought that piece would just be a, a fun piece since there aren't a lot of original trilogy mm-hmm. uh, chances over here in the u.s right that's um, such a I'm, that's just an england thing mostly. yeah i'm not gonna send the helmet overseas i don't think so um all right so yeah i thought i would just make it a catch-all for any star wars project that involved original stormtroopers in it so yeah oh, that's awesome which, is, which could be the mandalorian and everything else so yeah definitely fits the bill for veracu yeah so that's exactly what it is <laughs> nice <laughs> awesome okay um it ties in so, with pensacon so we'll uh jump right into pensacon then so uh, uh last month may uh, of 2021 uh, as everybody knows, we're kind of slowly coming out of this whole pandemic thing and s- things are starting to open up again. We've got a few conventions popping in here and there. Well, Pensacon happened. Um, and if you remember, this is about three years running now that Cantina Club's been represented. Um, I think, what, two years ago was the uh, the sort of Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark Fest <laughs> where they had a ton, right. a ton of actors from that. Uh, and then last year uh, I went um, and met up with Greedo. Uh, and and we went and saw um, basically that's where uh, I met uh, Dennis Lawson for the first time. The crushing blow and <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. You've seen the photo, <laughs> the, the 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 one where I'm not happy at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so this year. Uh, I was unable to make it, uh, as well as uh, Gundark was unable to make it. So Greedo uh, was technically flying solo. Uh, obviously, mm-hmm. didn't go by himself, but he uh, was, was the solo representative of the Cantina Club. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, mm-hmm. anyway, so uh, take it away. Give us an uh, give us an over uh, an overview of what you uh, what you thought of this year's as compared to the others. Well, um, I, I was going to uh, I'm going to get to this, but I wanted to mm-hmm. say I, I learned some interesting facts from each guest that I spoke to, um, which tells you it was a good time because if you have a chance to talk to people and yeah. you know get stories from them and stuff that's a much better experience than when you're in a giant line and sure you have two seconds to go through and, you know, get your autograph. And yeah, we've talked about that. That's, that's always stuff. the highlight for me is to get, just to be able to have the time to talk And Pensacon yeah. is kind of one of those setups where you kind of have that. It time. usually is, if, especially yeah. if you go on Friday, it's a three. Yeah. Oh yeah. Con, and if you go on Friday, um, 
you sometimes you have to wait for the guests to show up there they they come later in the afternoon sometimes but usually it's just not as packed as, as, mm -hmm. as saturday and sunday's weird because a lot of times even though guests are supposed to be there three days they'll show up for an hour and take off and they'll know? pack or, up early yeah yeah or they'll be out doing stuff on the floor and doing different things yeah. and you really don't get a chance to, right. get, to get them um mm -hmm. anyway this year was 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 fun um a lot of people were there uh i don't know you know what their official numbers were or how they felt like they did mm -hmm. but as far you know as far as if it was a big big success or not the the floor i went i just went on friday which is again the, probably the slowest day yeah and uh i try to get everything done during the day before you know people come in in the evening yeah um so the 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 convention floor was kind of slow you know there wasn't nearly as many people there mm -hmm. but uh, again that's kind of normal on a friday sure. um again they had a a good star wars guest list it may not have been as you know uh as kind of packed with it's you know guys with speaking roles and stuff as it has been in the past but they continued their tradition of having multiple star wars guests probably you know, emily swallow if you look at it from a certain perspective was probably the biggest speaking part they had and then um matthew wood is mm -hmm. the new ben burt you know sure and, yeah he's the new know, sound designer nice basically and, yeah uh and they had david accord there who does the he's credited with the voice of baby yoda but he's another sound editor um, mm -hmm. for lucasfilm and they actually both have credits on loki now the uh, oh nice yeah the marvel uh tele disney mm -hmm. plus television series sure um streaming series so they're they do they do a ton of stuff and uh matthew wood's credits are you know as long as your arm it's crazy oh yeah uh, so uh, i had to get him on stuff um and uh then they had nick maley who's known as the yoda guy who built um or helped co-build like four of the yoda puppets mm -hmm. and also did the main backup um for the yoda prototype puppet um that the puppeteer said they used for most of the scenes that ended up on screen oh, okay because oh, nice. the proto the prototype the first one had so many issues you know mm -hmm. they kept having uh problems functioning so by the time they made the next one um you know that one i think probably functioned a little better because of what oh, they okay. for making the first one right um and uh also he he did all the cantina creatures uh in star wars and uh some other things uh, and then there was John Morton, of course, Dak, and he's also known for yet another of the 18 guys who wore the Boba Fett suit <laughs> and, uh, uh, Dickie Beer, a stunt, stunt man who had tons of roles in Return of the Jedi, you know, in different costumes. And again, another guy known for wearing the, uh, the, the uh, Boba, Fett, yeah. Boba Fett costume. And he was and even then, a stand in um, for Luke on the skiff at yeah i was gonna yeah. get into that there's some oh, stuff sorry, i yeah. learned yeah there's mm -hmm. some stuff i learned that's, that i think is interesting mm -hmm. uh julius lafleur um who is another stuntman mm -hmm. who uh had multiple parts in jedi and is kind of best known or his biggest maybe his biggest part was um was the skiff master the guy that held the axe on luke and oh yeah the, that was the first one to go into the sarlacc pit you know, the big okay. dive, the big stunt, the big dive into the Sarlacc pit. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then there was Bob Spiker, who was Tuscan Raider on A New Hope. Oh, um, nice. And so anyway, I, I had a chance to talk to all of these uh, guys. And um, <clears throat> what, I, what, I, what I kind of was thinking of organizing my thoughts was, you know, one thing I learned from each of them the, that I didn't know before, mm -hmm. uh, because this is, to me, this is the stuff that's interesting. And uh, Nick Maley, I, I, he was the first guy I talked to. Well, really, it was Stephen Constantino. I forgot I, he was there too. <laughs> mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> Gamorrean guard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the on the barge and fought Luke. So everybody there either fought Luke or was Luke <laughs> you know, during the <laughs> during the skip battle. Nice. But uh, uh, yeah, while I was looking, uh, Nick Maley had the Yoda puppet there. Um, mm -hmm. the, the it's I think it's one that he has built, um, or in 2015, if I if I remember correctly, from the original molds. And it looks spot on. You'll see oh, wow. pictures and everything. And he mm -hmm. can uh, kind of mount it on his arm and it has some hydraulics that he controls with his other hand and he can make oh, it cool. you know, move and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, he had that, he has that on his table, you know, set up posed where you can take pictures with it. And while I was looking at his pictures and I was kind of waiting and he was talking to some, a couple of kids there with their parents, 
uh, Stephen Constantino came over to look at the puppet. So mm-hmm. he technically was the first guy I talked to. And oh, I, okay, I took, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took his picture with the Yoda puppet because he was like, Nick, what part of this can I touch? And he was like, well, you can touch the left hand. <laughs> 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 the left hand is made where people can touch it and hold his hand and stuff, but don't, yeah, oh, okay. don't touch the rest of it. So, uh, <laughs> don't touch the rest of it. Because, <laughs> you know, the latex and stuff will get right. worn out. Uh, yeah, exactly. The stuff from people's skin and everything. So um, anyway, the, I got Nick Maley to sign our Empire Strikes Back fan club poster that we had from oh, awesome. 1980 whatever you know Mm -hmm. um that came from the uh the star wars fan club Mm -hmm. and um since i'm never gonna get frank oz on there (laughs) yeah here's the closest thing to yoda uh, yoda person that's the closest yoda person you're gonna get yeah maybe get tom one day or something (laughs) (laughs) right not on empire i'm not unless not on the special special (laughs) edition where they go back and put tom king like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah let's overdub Frank Oz with Tom yeah, <laughs> then, then we'll know Dave Filoni's gone power mad when that happens <laughs> Clone Wars is the only Star yeah, Wars that's the only Star Wars <laughs> <laughs> but anyway uh, Nick Maley uh, I was talking to him and the first thing that I found out that shocked me was that uh, he and possibly others but he had a big part in creating the Han Solo and Carbonite oh um, okay you know prop and especially the close up face mm-hmm. and everything that they used oh, okay. and um yeah so i went ahead and added them to my java's palace multi mm-hmm. because you know Han and carbonite is right there in java's palace so right uh he also told me which i didn't know because he's not credited and there's no way to know that he worked for two weeks on return of the jedi so oh, okay um he moved on at the time i think he was working on superman or Su- superman 2 or something like that uh also mm-hmm. but a lot of the guys that worked on Jedi had worked with him and kind of under him on Empire. So he kind of, I think he just kind of went in for a couple of weeks. Everything was going well. But a lot of his costumes that he either created or worked on and everything um, in Star Wars were reused in Jabba's Palace. Of course, they threw every alien they had in there. Right. But the Han Solo and Carbonite thing was really cool. I didn't know that. And, um, you know, I probably would have had him sign a, you know, some more pictures or something with uh Hansel and Carbonite if I'd known that beforehand mm-hmm. um also uh he told me um you know my cantina club name is Greedo mm-hmm. and he told me that Greedo started life as a Martian or an alien in a bird's eye vegetables commercial really <laughs> yes <laughs> weird <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've never Which, heard that. That's crazy. I I could have heard this at some point, but I've completely forgotten it. You know, I yeah, if I, it yeah not, same here. If I heard that, I've completely just let forgotten. it go in. One, you know, I didn't file it away. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, he said that he said I said you created Greedo, right? And he said, or you built him, you know? And he said, mm-hmm. no. He said Greedo was mostly there, uh, the mask, you know, and everything. And his, uh, I don't know if it extended to his hands, but quite mm-hmm. possibly. He said what we did is he was he was smooth. And um, so they basically added all the bumps, um, all the all the bumps. Yeah, all the bumps. The, yeah, the, the, yeah. Mo, the mohawk they added. Uh-huh. And uh, so they just they just basically did enough to where they. I, guess, I mean, back then they wouldn't have been, but they did enough to where they wouldn't get sued. I guess. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> but but for whatever reason, I mean, they had the. I didn't ask him that part, but I, for whatever reason, they had the, the you know the mask and everything. Mm-hmm. So I assume they owned it, but. So yeah, he, Greedo was a freaking vegetable That's salesman. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> Probably why he's green or whatever, a little green man from Mars. Probably but, so. Um, oh, and also wow. vegetables. But yeah, so they just kind of glued pieces, you know, latex pieces mm-hmm. and rubber pieces onto him to change it enough to make it fit into the cantina or whatever. <laughs> That's interesting. Now he's learning so, something new. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that blew my mind a little bit. I got to mm-hmm. admit. And uh, I have to go back and find uh, and find that commercial if I can. I have a new, mm-hmm. new goal goal in life. Uh, <laughs> so next, I went to John Morton and had him sign the Empire Strikes Back poster, which I was debating, you know, about mm-hmm. how far down the rabbit hole do I go with people. But I thought, I thought he had a speaking part, you know, and he was Boba Fett in the Empire Strikes Back as well in a major scene. So why not, you know, have him mm-hmm. added to the poster? Um, <clears throat> And he, while we were talking, he told me um, that he was only supposed to, he was contracted, uh, he was a union actor, an American actor in mm-hmm. England 
he, I think mm-hmm. he said he had dual citizenships or the, or the, anyway, he was there on a work visa or something. Mm-hmm. And so he was one of the few Americans um, that was able to work on Star Wars in the sound stages and stuff in England. And uh, so he was contracted originally to do two days on Empire Strikes Back uh, through his agent. He showed up, um, they said, you're going to be, uh, um, you're going to be Luke Skywalker's co-pilot. <laughs> and he was, like, he was like, what, really? That's awesome. You know? That's great. So he's like, he was like rubbing his hands together, like, I'm going to, you know, they're going to make more of these. I'm going to be Luke Skywalker's co-pilot. Yeah, and no. they, and they, yeah they said, they said uh, there's, some, there's some other news. He went, what's that? And he said, you're dead. <laughs> you're yeah, dead. Yeah, you get killed. <laughs> so he was like, oh, darn, you know, but okay. So because it, it was two days was to be a rebel pilot. So, but he said, um, they, what happened was they had so many issues on the Empire Strikes Back, which is another interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Everything was constantly behind schedule, breaking down. They were having to wait, reshoot things. Um, There was just a lot of problems, especially on the Hoth base and then on the Bespin set and everything. So he ended up doing weeks on on the Empire Strikes Back (laughs) said that was supposed to be two days. But his contracts said union wages, which were really good. They're like, a lot of money, you know, mm-hmm. for a walk-on part, basically. Right. And so he was paid that rate the entire time. Oh, wow. So, so he was contracted yeah. for two days, ended up getting that for weeks. No for weeks, weeks. <laughs> yeah. And, they, and he said Lucasfilm was generous about it, but they just kept uh-huh. him around. And uh, um, so he said he made more on Empire mm-hmm. in those few weeks over the summer or whenever they filmed it uh, than he did in the entire year. <laughs> it is job the entire oh, wow. year before or whatever job he did acting the year oh, that's before. so great I love so, it. yeah and he said uh i said how did you end up as uh, Boba Fett?" and he said well they got tired of seeing me hanging around and knowing they were paying me and i wasn't doing anything <laughs> <And> so uh, <laughs> they kept trying to find ways to you know to put me you know, get him to do something said, yeah, yeah do things. <laughs> and uh jeremy bullock had a two-day role somewhere else that lucasfilm he said it was real nice of them they let him go do that um, okay. because he was also yeah, yeah. on the contract to them but they allowed him to go and since they were the same size they and he was hanging around getting paid to do nothing they put <laughs> him in the they put him in the boba fett costume and he said uh nobody knew i didn't had no clue because you know he was just hanging around he, he didn't even know as much as jeremy did and so um he went to jeremy the night before jeremy was going to leave and said mm-hmm. what do i do <laughs> you know what what do i do and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and jeremy told him uh think clint eastwood from festival of dollars oh okay and uh and d- he said that's what i'm doing i'm doing clint eastwood you know trying to move slow and menacing and as if he's very confident you know and, and very dangerous and uh, uh interesting so he, so he said in the hallway scene um where han's being tortured in the next room and, and you have billy d williams you have lando and, and vader mm-hmm. and Boba fett all kind of arguing about han's fate and everything um that's what he was trying to channel there was was clint eastwood and um you know so he 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 said that's why Boba fett Boba fett comes off as so confident in body language he tried to keep his chin out you know and and not be intimidated by Vader as much right? and, and move real slow and uh, as if he's, you know, preparing for something. But mm-hmm. um, so anyway, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, and uh, Julius LaFleur is a stuntman who doubled uh, uh, Billy D. Williams in Return of the Jedi on some stuff. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> he, um, he also, I think he's, he's American also. And um, what happened was um, <laughs> he was uh, working on Fast Times at Ridgemont High uh, at the time, which okay. those of us alive then will remember this movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and uh, he was uh, he was a stunt a stunt double for um, Forrest Whitaker, another eventual Star Wars connection. Mm-hmm. You know? And uh, which I even forgot Forrest Whitaker was in that movie, but he was. Yeah. And they were they had a football, some football shots in that movie or something. And so he went in as for Forrest Whitaker's double and was told to hit people really hard. And uh, Glenn Randall, who was a, a stunt coordinator, I think, or one of the stuntmen on Fast Times at Ridgemont High, was he was doubling someone else. 
And anyway, he was told to hit him hard. So he hit him really hard. We sent him to the hospital. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, he was, LaFleur was young at the time and was like, oh, damn, you know, I just ruined my career as a stuntman. Because <laughs> uh, Glenn Randall had a lot of, he'd worked a lot, you know, and mm -hmm. he, he knew a lot of people and worked a lot of things. So he's like, oof, I sent him to the hospital. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he said he kind of laid low after that and he kept getting calls from Glenn Randall from the hospital. He was avoiding uh -huh. him. He was like, Oh, I'm not going to talk to him. You know? <laughs> and he said, so finally he answered the phone one day and it was him. And he said, and he said, uh, I heard you're in the hospital. Yep. I'm in the hospital. And he, and he said, are you, are you doing anything right now? Uh, no. And he, and he said, uh, well, I want you to come to Yuma, Arizona and work on a movie for me. Oh. And he said, and he said, well, what is it? And he said, don't ask, just show up and here's where to go and everything. So he went and, um, <laughs> and uh, when he got there, the movie was called Blue Harvest, as we mm -hmm. know, you know, that's what Revenge of the Jedi yeah. is known on, on location. Mm -hmm. And he hadn't still had no clue when he got there. He said he was walking around uh, the set and stuff on the barge. And he said, oh, that that guy looks a lot like Harrison Ford. <laughs> but he, he's like, but it, you know, it can't be. It must be somebody else. And then later he saw Carrie Fisher and he's like, that looks like the actress from, you know, Princess Leia. And uh, and then he saw Billy D. Williams and he said, that's freaking Billy D. Williams. And so then he's thinking, these guys are making a, a movie a lot like Star Wars. A lot <laughs> like Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, like it's a copy or something, you know? Yeah, like, with the same actors. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he's like, he's like, but it can't be, right? You know, but um, and so he also saw he met Dickie Beard then and a lot of there was a lot of British stunt performers who they brought over and he said they were all in casts and they were all uh, limping around injured. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, and they were <laughs> bitching and moaning basically. And so Glenn Randall, you know, he's the guy who brought him over and he was kind of coordinating the stunts for the Starlight Pit and everything. And so he's like, it dawned on him, oh, he's getting payback on me for putting him in the hospital. He's going to put me in the hospital. He's going to put me in the hospital. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> and, uh, and so all the British stuntmen were like, we're like looking over Glenn Randall's shoulder when they were talking, going, no, <laughs> no, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> Whatever he's asking you to do, don't do it. <laughs> Just say no. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, he was supposed to be Billy D. Williams, you know, stunt double. So I, I, he does the stunts, you know, hanging from the, the thing and everything mm -hmm. like that, hanging from the, uh, uh, the skiff. And, uh, but he also ended up, because they were using so many masks and things, he ended up being the skiff driver um, and other parts in Jedi, but he ends up doing the jump into the Sarlacc pit because everybody else was hurt or too cowardly to do it. Uh, I won't say cowardly, but you know. No, I know, Jimmy, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but they didn't want to be the first. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I thought that was uh, that was extremely uh, interesting from Absolutely, uh, Julius yeah. Floor. And uh, there was some other stuff that um, I'll, have to, I'll have to try to remember what other stuff he told me, but um, he was a very interesting guy and uh he also signed two versions of the same picture for me and and uh and said you know pick whichever one you like because <laughs> because we didn't know what the color pen would look like you know he, mm -hmm. had a, he had a really cool sky blue pen i wanted to see what it looked like yeah and so th so then once he did it he said oh just take both of them you get a two for one <laughs> so, oh wow <laughs> so that's was cool. very very nice yeah oh very nice yeah. and uh <clears throat> very very nice dude and um mm -hmm. Dickie Beer is the other stuntman they had there who, of course, ended up in the uh, Boba Fett suit. Mm -hmm. But I found out that he did um, he did the stunt for Luke jumping across the two skiffs. You know, when Luke jumps yeah. across onto the jumps one from one to the other. Yeah. And he's mm -hmm. doing all that fighting on there and all that. Yeah. So he did the jump uh, because what happened was Colin Skeeping was hurt. Um, I believe, and I'm not 100% sure, but I think he did the. Uh, the when luke drops off the like the diving board stunt you know um i don't know that he did the flip but he did the part where he drops down off of it and back up mm -hmm. uh because again colin skeeping was rehearsing that and hurt himself somehow so mm -hmm. he didn't actually do that stunt mm -hmm. and then in the and then in the scenes where they're fighting on the skiff uh luke and boba fett he is boba fett and it's back to colin skeeping oh, okay luke there like when he cuts the cuts the blaster in half and right all that. yeah uh, all that part and then when the yeah. explosion behind him and he falls on the skiff mm -hmm. and things like that okay um and also i uh i believe he was boba fett uh rolling down into the sarlacc pit because nobody wants to do that either because <laughs> <laughs> he said uh <laughs> 
he said uh, the stuntman, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but it's like Bob Yerkes or something like mm-hmm. that, um, was the guy who did the Boba Fett flying from Jabba's barge over to the skiff. Okay. And after he did that, he was like, didn't want any more of it after that <laughs> because you can't see anything. You know, know, yeah. they're, they're taking you across the wires and stuff. So he's looking around and saw Dickie Bear was still in one piece and uh, had him, you know, it was like, hey, why don't you try on the Boba the Fett costume? And so, uh, so uh, I think he ended up doing the roll down the hill into the Starlight Pit and all that. Mm-hmm. Oh, but, awesome. uh, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. And the other thing I, I story I heard from Dickie Beard was um i asked him we were this is interesting because i had a um a skiff toy there from hasbro in a box and i was going to mm-hmm. have the guy sign it and then have billy D. williams sign it as well but the front of the box got scuffed up during all the transport uh, uh, yeah uh, and so i decided it was a little too scuffed i didn't want to fool with it yeah so uh but i was looking at it over on the side kind of and he came out <laughs> diggy beer came out from behind his his table to look at it and started talking to oh, us. oh cool <laughs> and, yeah and he talked to us for about 15 minutes or so mm-hmm. and even even people came to his table to spend money and his assistant was like hey you got some people and he's like oh they're okay <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> he kept talking to us until he finished his story <laughs> but i asked him uh what was your what's your favorite film you ever worked on and he said that i like them all equally so they don't have a favorite at all yeah i said i said okay well then what's the stunt you're most proud of and that was like a 10 minute story but oh i'm sure the, the essential part of it is that when he was starting out um in the 70s i believe he said he did this in 1976 or so uh a community asked him to do a reenactment and this was in germany i believe uh there was this medieval story of a, a priest who went to the top of a, their church clock tower and jumped off and I don't know the details of this, but it somehow saved the whole town. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was, that was like, and they asked him to recreate that. <laughs> <laughs> they asked him to recreate that on the, you know, on the date they celebrate the yeah. little festival or whatever. Okay. And so he had he had already said been training himself, jumping from he built his own mm-hmm. inflatable uh whatever they call it, stuntmen call that the inflatable mattress that you jump on that, that bag kind of thing so, yeah, the bag to jump into he yeah. built his own bag and everything he built uh-huh. his own bag and was jumping off things and training himself for you know a couple of years or whatever yeah and um and, and preparing and preparing he, and he did some commercials and some different events and things like that where he jumped from certain heights and so, and so he said, oh, a church clock tower, uh, uh, that can't be that bad. Sure, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll do that, you know? And so he told them yes, and they, they were going to pay him a lot of money, and um, the contracts were signed and stuff. And so he got there um, and went up to look at the clock tower or whatever, and he said he got up to the top, and he had, he had deployed his mattress down there to kind of have a view from the top and stuff. And at the top, and, he, and you have to hear it in his driven accent and everything. It's, yeah. it's hilarious. He said, I get to the top, and I look over. And my mat is a postage stamp. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's where I thought the story was going. It's like yeah. way higher than you thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, not only that, but there's a railing around the part of the clock tower they want to jump from. So you can't do a straight walk and, and dive. Mm-hmm. You have to climb up on this railing and stand and on just it. jump you know, off the railing. The railing. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you can't see until you get up there what you're getting into. And he stood up on that railing and looked down and he was like, and he said, I'm going to die. <laughs> this is going to be fatal. <laughs> wow. and, and so he, and he said, he came back down. And he was like, you know, white as a ghost. And they said, everything okay? And he looks around. And, and so it's on the day of the thing. And thousands of people showed up. It ended up, I think he said something like 40 or 50,000 people Ooh, wow. showed up uh, in this town to, to, for the festival, but also they're all sure. going to be there for the big stunt. We'll say this is like a it. big local, uh, local yeah, story. Yeah, film it and everything. And there was news crews there. And mm-hmm. he looked around and all these people. He had done contracted to do it. He thought he'd let all these people down if he canceled. But he told his friend who went with him, he said, I I, I am going to die. His friend's like, what? What do you mean? He's like, I, he said, I've never done this height. I've never come close to this height. And he said, and it was like, the only way I could do this is to practice and practice. And I, I never practiced it. Yeah. And um, so anyway, but he said, I have to do it. And he said, no, his friend's like, no, don't do it. Don't yeah, kill yourself. Don't, it's he's not like, worth no. dying over yeah, it. He's like, I, look at all these people here. They, yeah. you know, I was expected to do it, so I have to do it. <laughs> so uh, he actually called his uh, family and his bank and made his last arrangements and everything. Wow. And had his car had his car given to someone, like his car was given to his friend. He wrote something mm-hmm. saying that, you know, I'm giving my car to my friend. 
and wow. he gave his, he he gave his bank account. You know, I can't remember some family member or something because mm-hmm. so, he thought he was going to be either horribly injured or dead. So he got up there and uh, <clears throat> basically um, did the stunt, and he said it went perfectly. Wow! And uh, but he learned from that uh, mm-hmm. to um, to always be prepared and sure. to not not do anything without you know looking at it first and everything this is early yeah. on in his career yeah don't agree and, to it till you know what you're getting into yeah. yeah he's like the opposite of jackie chan if you look at his credits they're immense he's done tons and tons of movies mm-hmm. but he said he's he's hardly ever been hurt um he's had minor injuries he said like four times mm-hmm. and it was it was usually because of uh, poor costume design and and the uh, photographers or whatever not letting him change stuff to safety yeah. specs you know um but but he said the reason he hasn't been hurt is because of what he learned from that clock tower incident that he was given a second chance and uh the other interesting thing he told us was he said always give uh never give a hundred percent i thought this was interesting okay (laughs) it's the opposite of what you'd expect right never give a hundred percent always give 75 percent okay like wow that's interesting why and he said because if you give a hundred percent and he's, he's using this as a metaphor for all work in life. But yeah. in his case, in his case, the director will come around and go, that was amazing. Now do it three more times. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I want more of that. You know? Right. And you've given it all and, you, and you're going to get hurt or mm-hmm. killed, you know, or it's going to fail. So he said, always give it most 75 percent so that hold that and know what your reserves are. And yeah, hold, reserves hold something and, in reserve. Yeah. So that you can. Uh, perform up to what people want and have more oh, okay. offer and everything. Makes sense. But he, but he was he was laughing about it, you know, only give 75%. So he knew it was kind of tongue in cheek, but he was serious about it as well. And I thought that was a very interesting perspective on, on very life much and so. work. So yeah. And uh, let's see, the last guy was Bob Spiker, um, who was the Tuscan Raider on A New Hope. And the reason he was on A New Hope was because he was an elephant trainer. Mm-hmm. And he was uh, 19 years old, he said at the time when that was filmed. Mm-hmm. And he had an elephant act with four elephants. And um, the one used in A New Hope was named Margie, which I didn't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Margie the <laughs> elephant. And he, he chose her because she had such a good disposition. She was mm-hmm. a wonderful, loved people and always followed commands and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And um, the uh, saddle that was built for the bantha, you know, they put the whole bantha prosthetic on top of the elephant. It took five months to get right. Oh, wow. Because it weighed so much that it was too much weight on the elephants. They had to keep redesigning it with, with different uh, materials until it, mm-hmm. you know, until the elephant was able to handle it safely. And uh, also, you know, the shot where the Tuscan Raider jumps off the ridge and onto the elephant. Mm-hmm. And then you hope when the music starts, you know, they're all going crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, that was him and that was his idea uh because oh, okay. they had they had built the saddle well, um with just like different points like four different points along the side of the elephant and then the top of the saddle was built up on way on top of the elephant as well it was high mm-hmm. so it, there was no way to safely run over and climb that thing with the tuscan raider mask on so yeah he yeah seen it. he said he was all over the place <laughs> about to kill himself and the elephant was you know was scared so so he, there was a ridge there in arizona um that, that was around the spot they were filming. He said, can we use that? And they said, well, let's ask Lucas. And Lucas said, sure. And, and you know, can you do that? Can you jump on the back of an elephant? That? He said, yeah, I do that kind of thing in my act all the time. So he took the elephant and put it next to the ridge and ran and jumped, jumped on her. And he said the first time it scared the elephant really bad. Yeah, she, yeah. she didn't see him coming, but, it, but he talked to her. And when she heard his voice, she was calm and everything. So mm-hmm. um, they did a couple of takes of that. And Lucas said he had enough and, so that's how that shot in oh, wow. the movie was. Oh, very that's, cool. That's him, and that was his idea. So yeah, again, so many things just happen by coincidence and by different. So many people contribute, you know, mm-hmm. different things. And yeah, uh, just coming up with random ideas here and there. Yeah, that and the other people didn't think of. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, that's yeah. so and, cool. And just making use of what you have. You plan whatever you want. Mm-hmm. But you, you have to make use of what you have in the moment, you know, on a, on a movie, just like anything else. So yeah, exactly. You end up with things that are different than you plan. Sometimes they're phenomenal. You know, sometimes they're terrible, but. Right. So uh, that was a long winded <laughs> thing, but that's pretty much all the things I didn't know mm-hmm. um, that I learned in conversation with the guests there at Pensacon. So. 
Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, Very cool. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I spent the day on Friday getting autographs and then, um, kind of just hanging out a little bit because, uh, and, and also, um, Michael Bean was there and I kept getting, people kept thinking I was in line for him and I'd get thrown out of the room <laughs> because of the COVID rules, you know? Yeah. Like, Who are, yeah. You're too close to Michael Bean. Go, go get in his line. Or it's like, I'm, I'm not in line. Not oh, in oh, line. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to go. <laughs> and, uh, I just didn't argue with them. But, uh, and um, uh, Matthew Wood and David Accord, I also, talked with them mm -hmm. i didn't really learn any anything particular i didn't know but it was more like we were just joking around about stuff yeah. like okay I, I called baby yoda the lucasfilm money printing machine and, uh, <laughs> he, got a, he got a big kick out of that <laughs> and uh and uh matthew wood told me i i think i already knew this from watching the mandalorian but he mm -hmm. said he said the set for Jabba's palace is absolutely amazing that they oh, spent okay they spared no expense. There's nothing virtual there that is all, I mean, it's not like the, the volume or whatever. It's an actual yeah. um, old school set and mm -hmm. they, reprodu they reproduced everything. Yeah. No blue screens, uh, no nothing. Yeah. yeah. They went so mm -hmm. far into detail. He said, uh, when you walked on the set, it was just mind boggling to see wow. you know, that you were That's there awesome. and, and Java's thrown and everything and the, and the palace. Oh, very, so, very awesome. I love it. Oh, and I also asked David Accord for a spoiler. And uh, <laughs> I said, "Is Grogu coming back in the next season of Mandalorian?" And he and he said, "Oh well, I'll tell you." Or whatever. And he went, "No, of course I can't tell you this." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and he said, he, "He said, actually, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know anything. I don't know anything about anything with uh, mm -hmm. Grogu right now." So if he was being honest, that was kind of interesting because I thought there would have been things in the works by. May, well, I, I have know, a feeling they're probably in not. the works as in they've been been written or are being being written as we speak. And, you know, they're not even probably into pre-production yet because they still are working on, you know, Book of Boba Fett. And yeah. you know, they, they push Mandalorian season three till uh, till next year. So, yeah, it sounds like that's what they've done is kind of punted mm -hmm. on that to give it a. I don't know, a chance to focus on all these other projects they've got going on. And that's the thing. Yeah. Maybe, like maybe Filoni and uh, Fabro, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Filoni and Fabro are working on like 11 shows right now. <laughs> I can't even imagine, you know, trying to keep all that straight. So, yeah, that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. It's so, a bunch. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, I, I, I highly recommend Pensacon, um, the uh, everything, they always do everything top notch. Yeah. Well, I had a blast there the, the was, last uh, year when I went. It was a really, was really a, good one. It was a little more crazy this year, I thought, as far mm -hmm. as like they didn't have as many volunteers, which, you know, they always have some of the best volunteers, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And this time, uh, the volunteers that were there were very, were very stressed out and overworked. Yeah. Uh, but they did, a, they did a good job, but, but good, they just didn't have, probably didn't have as many, you know. Anything uh, interesting that you picked up while you were there? Any uh, interesting finds or? Uh, I wasn't really there for, you know, the merchandise and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent all my money on autographs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, oh, I, yeah, I know that's all that was your focus. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We did get, um, we did get uh, the, what are they called? The uh, geeky tiki's. They're, they're cups and mugs that are made from pop culture, you know, <laughs> nerd references. And we got, gotcha. uh, okay. we got the, we got the Tom Tom mug to go with the, uh, for Gundark as a gift to go with. Her oh, Tom nice. Tom slippers um, and her yeah, tauntaun yeah. Uh, sleeping bag and <laughs> yeah and her tauntaun <laughs> all everything. the tauntaun stuff she had <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, uh, okay very cool and that was pretty awesome yeah yeah but, uh, now did you you didn't say all three days right you just said what no friday just saturday friday. this friday oh, oh just friday yeah, I, just I, friday I was, yeah i was thinking you did two days because you, you came back on saturday okay yeah no i i've been having enough you know stuff to do to where mm. um it's been tougher to because like, last year we went to all three days come. yeah yeah when, and when i would we i would love to do that but mm -hmm. um <clears throat> especially with how accessible these guests were and everything and uh, yeah. how nice they were it'd be cool to go back and mm -hmm. and uh and talk to them again and stuff but um but anyway yeah i look forward to hopefully what they have in store next year hopefully they'll have another great I, I, that's the main thing, you know, that I admire about them is that every year they have six to eight Star Wars guests, you know, mm -hmm. and they've brought some great ones, you know, Robert Watts and Julian Glover and uh, just, you know, Dennis Lawson and mm -hmm. uh, 
a lot of really cool names. So, um, yeah, it does seem the last few years to be pretty, uh, pretty Star Wars rich when it comes to the guest yeah. list. Yeah, and 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 if you if you're like me and us and you like all the technical side of everything, they always mm-hmm. have some of the behind the scenes people there. Yeah, too, and they they know. just have such interesting stories like you just shared. Yeah, you know, oh, those are yeah. always so fascinating. Like last year, that was literally the highlight of all of it for me was just mm-hmm. standing there talking to you know uh, Alex McGinnis and uh, and just or Angus McGinnis. Uh, just talking to him hearing those stories the behind the and not even just yeah. the star wars stuff you know no, talking about Witness and career, some of the yeah. other yeah you know, some of the other movies that he's been in just you know crazy interesting story in vikings and stuff like that you know that's just interesting hearing him talk about all those things but uh well cool yeah it sounds like i'm glad you had a good time yeah it was definitely but now you've got another fun. one coming up soon right you're going to uh what is it mississippi con mississippi comic con yeah okay so that's Billy coming D. up Williams pretty soon. Is, it's in uh four days okay for yeah. it so <laughs> nice that will be uh that'll be another one we post uh, some video yeah we'll do a synopsis of that as well and that's yeah. it so the, obviously the marquee guest at that is billy d williams correct yeah and uh mm-hmm. if you're into wrestling sting seems to be the other oh, okay Got guest it. that people are excited about which i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not a big wrestling fan but yeah same here um, but but as far as star wars it's billy d williams is there anybody else going star wars i don't think so i don't think okay. we've added anybody else mm-hmm. and uh I'm okay with that because he's my main goal. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, he's exactly. going to be expensive and and uh, time consuming um, mm-hmm. because I'm hoping. Uh, they, unfortunately, with them, they're a Saturday, Sunday only, so oh, okay. um, you don't have the chance to sneak in on a Friday afternoon and, and just get a quick autograph. Yeah, yeah and mm-hmm. beat the crowds so for the be, crowds. Yeah, I'll be fighting the crowd for sure. But um, exactly, and, it, and I expect it to be more of a you know there's not going to be a chance for conversation i'm sure um probably not unfortunately yeah, it'll, it'll if, if so then very brief i mean i've yeah. you know i've been lucky enough over the years that even at the celebrations which as we know are notorious for their chaotic lines and long mm-hmm. waits and all that kind of stuff even then i've managed to get some halfway decent conversations out of some of the guests you know so yeah. it's not not a, not a, and and obviously the the lesser known guests have more time because there's not as many people in line, but even some of the top or, you know, top line guests have, have like Anthony Daniels took, you know, some extra time to, sure. to speak to me and my friend when I was there and told us a couple of quick stories, which is really, which was nice as opposed to just a, you know, just a cattle call saying, okay, yeah, next, you know, get out of my face. You know, yeah, it's always <laughs> kind of up to the guest, it seems like. And yeah, some of them really take their time and it, 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 people in line can be annoyed about that but right. especially the people that are coming with a bunch of items to be signed and they're just more autograph hunters but for right. people like us the autograph is almost incidental to it's meeting just them. yeah it's just secondary um, to the actual yeah. meeting and hearing it's, stories it's either or if all you're going to get is an autograph i'll take it but if you're right. if you're going to get it to speak to them and you know see them for a second or for you know however long then i'd rather have that you know yeah oh same here autograph but yeah no brainer for sure <laughs> but i learned uh in our first big convention to just temper expectations because uh yeah. you never know what's going to happen it's probably not going to go the way you think like right exactly i, I hate to quote the last jedi but yeah, i just did it <laughs> yeah you did <laughs> well it's your favorite movie so it's it is good time to quote <laughs> all right so um so we're going to move on to our, uh, our, our, our next segment here. Uh, this is the special guest, uh, that we haven't had on the show for a couple of years. Um, I had to do a little maintenance. It was a little nasty in the cave that I had to go back into. Um, oh, now I know this, special ooh, but yeah, but he, I, you know, I woke him up. He's good. He's been hibernating, so he <laughs> should have some energy. Uh, but, uh, we're bringing back the boar gullet. Ask the boar gullet. Ask the boar gullet. The unfortunate side effect is that one tends to lose one's mind. 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 Wow. We are going to ask the Boar Gullet some questions about some upcoming Star Wars projects. And you know why we're asking the Boar Gullet? 
Why? Because he's always right? Because <laughs> he knows Forgo, the truth. Forgo will know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> Just ask Saw Guerrero. He knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that's what we're basically going to do here. Um, and honestly, there's no uh, rhyme or reason to this. We're just going to throw out some random questions. We'll go back and forth. Um, Are you sure uh, that the, the Borgullet is still alive? Did you remember to feed it? Minds or well, he, he hibernates for long <laughs> periods of time. So oh, if, I, if I forget you to sure about that, or is he? No, dead? I mean, yeah, I mean, he was in there. He, yeah, he was breathing when I checked. So <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I just wonder how often you actually check. I mean, <laughs> every eight or nine months, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he sleeps on a bed of shredded pilots. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> nice. Okay. Um, okay. So basically, uh, I figure we'll kind of frame our questions around some of the upcoming Star Wars projects, the Disney Plus, uh, and some of the feature films that may be coming out, uh, and just kind of see what the Borgullet has to say about okay. about this stuff. So that way we'll get some some spoilers, basically, because Borgullet knows the truth and he's never wrong. So, you know. Yeah, I do wonder, though, if I want to know bad enough to lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's something you got to take in consideration, you know. Right. Yeah, it it is definitely a hazard with the Borg gullet. It's not I've like managed to live this though. long with the Borg gullet, so I, you know, I've made it. <laughs> so uh, okay, uh, do you it's happen like an to appendix have appendix for me? It might as well lose it. <laughs> <laughs> it serves no purpose whatsoever. Exactly. All right. So, uh, do you have a question to start us off, or would you like me to start us off? Um. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll start us off. Okay. Um, what you got? <clears throat> um. Poor Gullet. Uh, hello. <laughs> long time, long <laughs> he said, he no, said so long. <laughs> no, no, no Gullet. Um, <laughs> um, poor Gullet. Will, um, will Book of Boba Fett come out on Disney Plus where we can watch it this year? This year. So uh, in the calendar 2021. year 2021. Yes, poor Gullet. Okay, poor Gullet. Will <laughs> Boba Fett be on disney plus for us to actually watch it in the year 2021 all right he's thinking mm. kicking off the rust uh, the outlook is good the outlook is good. outlook okay. is good outlook so good he knows the truth but he's he, he yeah knows more he's of still a being suspicion. vague he's right. still being vague he's it's, not going to show all he's not going to show all his cards a, he knows the trends <laughs> oh, well, it, we'll know the trends he knows the outlook. <laughs> well, got it. Can sense percentages. <laughs> exactly. You should have him in Vegas for the odds makers. <laughs> All right. So my question will be, uh, Borgullet, um, with the fact that um, we've had a lot of the controversy around Rangers of the New Republic, uh, with the Gina Carano firing and all that stuff being up in the air uh, and that show being canceled and, you know, rumored to be canceled, rumored to be remolded into something else. Um, well, call it requires a question, <laughs> not your Will... exposition. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> so, oh, excuse me, Mr. Guerrero. Yeah. Um, Will Rangers of the New Republic see the light of day? As I see it, yes. Okay. So, so we're going to get a Rangers of the New Republic. Very as nice. Because God, God forsaken as it may end up being, they will make That's it. right. Absolutely. But either way, we will see it. Hmm. All right. So uh, what's your next question, Greedo? Uh, okay. Um, Bar Bargullet. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the truth. Bargullet. <laughs> um, will we see uh luke skywalker again in in, a, in you know live action media okay so will there be a, a live action luke appearing in star wars media coming up without a doubt oh okay. <laughs> lots more luke coming very nice very nice. Well, at least a second you know, from behind a yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we'll See, all he said is, without a doubt, it is much. <laughs> I will. Uh, I will uh, tag on to that one and say, will Sebastian Shaw be the one cast as Luke in a series about Luke Skywalker? Ah, <laughs> uh, my reply is no. <laughs> I'm very confused because you mean you mean 
Stan, sorry. Stan. Sebastian Shaw Shaw dead. Oh, you know what? I have to (laughs) to ask the question again. I have to ask the question again because clearly he said that answer based (laughs) on my question. So will Sebastian Stan... What was his answer for Shaw? I need to know. Oh, I I said said my reply is no. Oh, well, Borgola... Because clearly, because he's already passed away. Refusing to be tricked, right. (laughs) Yeah. Okay, so will Sebastian Stan be (laughs) cast as Luke Skywalker? (laughs) A little different. (laughs) Will he be cast as Luke Skywalker in a live-action Luke Skywalker series? Ah, without a doubt. Wow, okay. See, you can't trick the Borgola. Yeah, breaking news. Shaw is out. (laughs) <laughs> Shaw is definitely no out. chance of him playing <laughs> no chance the, of him. <laughs> whatever the, the, the ghost of luke i don't know what he would play <laughs> exactly all right tell, tell poor gullet you were right <laughs> <laughs> you were right <laughs> poor gullet was right about me <laughs> all right greedo what you got uh yes poor gullet poor gullet I need to know. Um, Will it? Will it? <clears throat> Will Grogu be in season three of The Mandalorian? Will Grogu be in season three of The Mandalorian? Uh oh. Maybe. What? Yeah. <laughs> Borgol is toying with us now. I'll let me try yeah, and ask him one more time. He will know the truth. But he let may me not try and ask him one more time. Okay, we, we really need to know this, Borgol. Yeah, maybe he thinks of him as Baby Yoda still. Uh, true. Okay. Will <laughs> Grogu, aka Baby Yoda, be in season three of The Mandalorian? My sources say no. So apparently Borgola has sources. Oh, yes, sources. <laughs> he doesn't just know everything. Maybe apparently he has to ask people. Yeah. <laughs> They've had this discussion before or they had a very rapid one now. Yeah. He must have he must have Filoni or Favreau in his Borgolet pit with the tentacles around and just suck the information straight from their brain, I guess. I think I think that might That's be how it. he works. So right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Hmm. All right. Um, okay. So no Grogu, but Luke. <laughs> we'll get so Luke, no Grogu, but, no but we Grogu. got Luke. So Luke's going to show up and like, uh, yeah, something <laughs> happened. <laughs> there was an accident. There was this, this thing happened. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me see. All right. So with, um, oh, I know. Will we get a direct tie-in with the Ahsoka Tano series and the Mandalorian. And I know we've already had her obviously in the show, but I mean, will the storylines, like once the Ahsoka Tano series comes out, will the storylines actually intertwine with the Mandalorian? My reply is no, says the Borg Gullet. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, too. but they would keep it separate. Okay, yeah. Same timeline, but they keep it separate. Okay, all right. <clears throat> it's a big galaxy, even though you know everyone <laughs> knows each other is related. everybody is related yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be a big galaxy so <clears throat> all right uh let me think for a second uh what uh what i want to uh, ask well, god um, is impatient <laughs> well, god, it <laughs> he wants be. to go back to sleep <laughs> <laughs> um, uh okay book of boba fett borgolet i'm sure you've heard of it borgolet <laughs> So, is that your question? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, is that your question? <laughs> um, will the book of Boba Fett show us what happened to Boba uh, after Return of the Jedi, directly after Return of the Jedi, but before the events of Mandalorian season two? Okay, so so you're asking basically about the timeline. I'm asking about will we see him escape the Sarlacc? Will we right, see you're, you're specifically want to see if, if we find out if they do maybe a flashback to see how he got out of there. Yes. All right, Borgola, will we see in the book of Boba Fett how Boba Fett escaped the Sarlacc? My reply is no. Okay. All I will right. not see that, unfortunately. All right. Hmm. I'm beginning <laughs> to have my... All right, so will we Doubt. see will we see live action Grand Admiral Thrawn in the Mandalorian? We're pretty sure it's going to be the Ahsoka Tano series. Will he be in the Mandalorian? Maybe. <laughs> you got to be a Grand Admiral. You need to just say Thrawn. 
Oh, okay. So well, maybe he's getting hung up on the Grand Admiral. I, I think he is. I, I sometimes he gets a little confused, even though he knows the truth. He gets confused. Yes. Okay. All right. So will Thrawn be in the Mandalorian series? Yeah. What is he, Grand Admiral of if the Empire's? <laughs> Toast. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? I thought he knew the truth. What's going Just on? Call up Saw. We got a bogus wow. Bordellet here. So we got How does he not Bordellet know? He knows, the, he knows the truth. You don't. Can't, the can't line is an ice. It's, it's not. The Bordellet doesn't know the truth. Every day. More lies. <laughs> 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 it must be a monday <laughs> all right we, all right we may, well, we may circle back to that we one. may circle back and try to trick yeah. more how can we yeah. ask that will there be a blue skinned red blue skinned, eyed, yeah, militaristic red eyed. alien um okay <laughs> well, God, it's, uh about uh the obi-wan series but got it um Will we see Hayden Christensen and uh, Ewan McGregor sharing a scene or scenes? Okay, Borgullet, will we see in the, book, or the, the Obi-Wan series, will we see Hayden Christensen and Ewan McGregor sharing a scene on screen? Or scenes. Or scenes, yes. Mm. No. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> they cast them both. Just but no. It's just completely separate. <laughs> It'd be like, it's all Obi Wan's fault. If only he was here, but he's not. <laughs> but he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> and then Obi Wan will be like, there was that time long ago, but nothing happened then. It's not worth showing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. There's no need for flashbacks. <laughs> yes. I must focus on the now. <laughs> and and there's no Anakin here whatsoever. Uh, that's great. <laughs> okay, right, so, yeah, um, I don't know. Morgulet's straying off. I think he's straining, trying to escape. I think he, <laughs> yeah, he is. I think of, either that you, or he's praying for death because you, you've just neglected him so badly. <laughs> he's trying to he's complaining of being useless. overworked because, you know, even though this is the first time we worked him in two and a half years, right. <laughs> he's complaining of being overworked with this. Oh, I see. <laughs> All he right. Was, he was collecting unemployment this whole <laughs> Exactly. And he doesn't want to go back to work. All right, so will there be a second season of the Bad Batch? Mm, Batter Batch. Most likely. That's good news. Yeah, and it will be called the Batter Batch. Point of view. Yeah, yeah Bad Batches. Bad. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it. Mm. Since you are trying to misdirect us. With the Obi Wan series, I need some bullet. Strain yourself, strain your tentacles and bladders, and uh, and emit some of your mu mucus from. Get on it, <laughs> and get on tell it. me, tell me more, Gullet. Will we see a young Luke Skywalker in Obi Wan? Will we see a young Luke Skywalker in the Obi Wan series? Is this the Luke you referred to? I don't know. <laughs> I think they, they do such a good job at Lucasfilm with spoilers that even more Gullet can't. <laughs> even more Gullet cannot say. <laughs> Always in motion is the future. <laughs> he doesn't know. He's just flopping around. Yeah, he's just, he's so tired. I don't know, I'll get it, you know. <clears throat> he's he acting a, very lethargic. He a, yeah, he has a cheeseburger in each tentacle. Yes. <laughs> Just wanting to, he's just wanting to binge watch something and, <laughs> yeah. and, eat, and eat McDonald's. Exactly. All right. So we'll, okay, based on some of the stuff going on behind the scenes, which we won't get into the details, will the show The Acolyte be a success? I didn't no. even know there was details. Oh, <laughs> she's very definitive. Like, how That's, do we yeah, even define the... success? He's like, we're not even getting into that discussion. Just yeah, nope. I, uh, nope. I kind of predicted that one myself. But anyway, yeah, there you go. No. I'm wondering if Obi Wan's going to be a success with no young Luke and no Hayden and no, <laughs> no Hayden Ewan Christensen sharing scenes. scenes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, the, what are they? Gonna, what are they doing? <laughs> All right. What do you got? Um. 
<clears throat> okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, maybe you'd have better luck with the Thrawn question. Yeah, uh, Bog got it. <clears throat> Wake up, pay attention. <laughs> Smack. <laughs> Bog got it. Bog got it. Uh, Bog got it. Wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Stir yourself. No time for sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come here? Uh, all right, Borg Gullet. <laughs> Borg Gullet. Kill me? <laughs> we, oh, I love it. Okay. It, it, I'm going to phrase it differently. It's F the Borg Gullet in his roundabout ways. That's probably right. not the best way to get him to answer. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Let's not just throw out bombs. Well, the gullet, next okay? is a cattle prod. If he doesn't get off his... <laughs> Off his air bladder here, and uh, Borgullet, uh, will Thrawn, a blue skinned, red eyed, militaristic type genius alien with questionable, you know, morals, will will this character appear in the Ahsoka Disney Plus series? Borgullet. You may rely on it. Okay, so yeah. he's confident. Yeah, he seems that. pretty confident on that. All right, let me see what I got here. <clears throat> what else can I ask about upcoming projects? Okay, here's one. Will the film, the feature film Rogue Squadron, will that be about original trilogy Rogue Squadron or a new Rogue Squadron? No, I can't ask either or. Will it be about the original Rogue Squadron featuring Wedge. It is decidedly so. All right. You threw in the featuring Wedge, so I guess that's a done deal. Yeah, I mean, there you go. That's happening. Will Dennis Lawson, Ewan McGregor, and Hayden Christensen <laughs> share a scene? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, okay. Um, oh, got it. Oh, got it. <laughs> God, God, I don't want to answer any more questions. <laughs> Stir yourself, for God, it. You stand here amongst my creation. <laughs> um, Borgullet. Uh, hey, wake up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Will Din Djarin rule Mandalore in? Season three of the Mandalorian. Yeah, specifically in season three. Okay, Borg Gullet, Will Din Djarin, a.k.a. the lead in Mandalorian, because you probably don't know that. Um, he will, knows the will he, he, will knows he lead the Mandalore in season three of the Mandalorian? Did As I see it, yes. Come here to rule me? 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 So the answer was, as I see it, yes. He does have at least how one he eye. sees it. What's that? Yeah, he has at least one eye that he can roll True. around. True. To he can see. roll it around. Yeah. If it's if it's anywhere to the side or behind, though, he may not see it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it must have been right in front of him. Exactly. All right. You have any other questions for Bogolet? Hmm. I don't know. Let me come up with one more. I'll come up with one and you come up with one. We'll ask two more questions. Okay. And I, then put I him do. to bed. <laughs> you have one? Yeah, I have one question. Okay, what you got? Um, will Billy D. Williams appear at Mississippi Comic Con in June of this year? In oh, okay. Interesting we'll question. Switching gears here, Borgullet. Um, will he will Billy D. Williams? Uh, will, he, will he actually make it? Will Billy Williams actually make it to uh, Mississippi Con in June Con. of 2021? Mississippi Comic Con. Okay. Oh, okay. He said, I don't know. So I guess I didn't ask it right. No, he said okay. Mississippi so, Con. And what is it? It's Mississippi Comic Con. Comic Con. <laughs> Comic Con. Comic Con. You know, Comic Con. I know. That's what I was asking. I know if it was Comic, Comic Con or Con. actually just Comic Con. Okay. Yeah, Comic Con. All right. You got to get this right, or Borgullet will will lead you astray. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, will Billy D. Will <clears throat> excuse me? Will <laughs> Billy D. Williams 
<laughs> actually make it to Mississippi Comic Con in June of 2021. You may rely on it. Oh, good. So he'll I'm be so there. relieved. He'll be there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> now you can you can rest easy and get some yes. sleep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right um so let me see i gotta come up with one more question and we'll wrap this up um Borgula, is cad bane the number one star wars character of all time <laughs> actually that's actually not a bad question um will i'm gonna ask this okay will cad bane live action will we get a live action cad bane in the book of boba fett As I see it, yes. All right. Mm. So we were going to have live Cad Bane. Very okay. nice. Very nice. Uh, I'm happy now. All right, cool. All right, guy, go away, Booger. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> he demands his sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Your mind. He's going. <laughs> He's going back to hibernate now. He's been he's been asleep for nine months and he woke up for 20 minutes and now he's going back. <laughs> the truth is too much for him to handle. It is. Apparently his, his, breaks his vague it. version of it. <laughs> <laughs> they should he, he should have an option to you do not want to know. That would be a good one. Exactly. I don't want to know, and neither do you. <laughs> Ask the board go ahead. Ask the Ask the You know the truth. Lies. Lies. Deceptions. 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 lose one's mind nice all right so there we have another uh uh the first time we've had borgullet out in quite some time we had to dust him off um but yeah so we've got a few uh, a few spoilers for the uh for the upcoming uh, uh programs on disney plus and feature films so i like it wow I love it. yeah you, you, heard heard it you heard it right here folks on the cantina club first <laughs> don't forget that <laughs> the major disappointment of, of no Hayden and no you, and even though they're on the same project, they will not, <laughs> not share a scene. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, you know, Borg Gullet knows the truth. Mm. And let's look, little, even, even little baby Greedo agrees. No, <clears> trying <throat> to turn his head. No. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, unless you have anything else, I think we'll uh, go ahead and wrap it up there. No, this has been epic and <laughs> overlong. It's like a, a Heaven's Gate or something. Yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, uh, you know what to do. Go ahead and uh, uh, click like on the video down below. Leave us some comments. Subscribe to us. Hit the little bell icon for updates when we upload new, uh, new uh, episodes. And uh, we'd love to talk to you and hear from you. Uh, and so until next time, we'll see you then. Cantina Club. <laughs> <laughs> Crossed wrenches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crossed wrenches. <laughs> Don't mess with the cross wrenches. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know we had a gang sign, did you? <laughs> no, <I didn't. laughs> Apparently we do.